wasn't gonna compare myself to strong black queens. <laughs> oh! Hey, Couture Bays, it's your girl, Brooke Bright, going live with the Bree Talk and Bay Squad. We have got to talk about Nicki Minaj's relationship with the industry and Dej Love, because y'all know I love me some Dej. But before we get into that, let's like, comment, and subscribe. Tap that notification bell so you can get all the updates and alerts. And remember, opinions are not facts. Everything we say here is allegedly and for entertainment purposes solely. So sit back, relax, sip you some apple juice or my favorite vegan water and let's get into the mess, shall we? We're going to start off with Hot 97 versus Nicki Minaj, where things went wrong and where I believe Nicki found out the industry doesn't give a damn about black women. Let's get into it. Ebro has some real Listen, kick about Nicki Minaj. Rosenberg didn't want to own this, but about six months ago, mm -hmm. Rosenberg called Nicki Minaj out for making whack pop records. Okay. And Rosenberg... How many records is she selling now? Uh, SoundScan says that last week on Nikki's Black Friday release of her new version of the album, she sold 30, 36,000. No! 36,000. Now, Rosenberg, that's all you. You put in work on her, son. You gotta own this one. You may have ended Nicki Minaj's career. Well, just to play devil's advocate, it is a re-release of the old album with newer tracks, right? <laughs> It's 36,000 copies. <laughs> How much did she sell last time? Uh, of the album? Yes. It's it's over gold. It's in the first week she did, what, 200,000 the first week or something like that? And she now did. she's down to 36 after you make your comments? What is going on? I Rosenberg, you're going to have to own this thing. I did not end Nicki Minaj's career. I think she's going to be all right. Did you bring up Nicki Minaj's career in the meeting? What, with the white people? Yeah. Yeah. Yes! I don't want to say anything. Well, that's racist if you did, and you and the whiteys teamed up on Nicki Minaj. Nicki, I'll help you. Hot 97 started your career. Yes. We'll dust you off again. Oh, God. And bring you back to life. You just got to listen to me. It's so... You know what? Like, I get it. Like, that's what you do. I guess, to me, I just don't know your resume. You know what I'm saying? So... I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying because, you know, I grew up in New York. Well, I've grown up on Hot 97, like, you know what I'm saying? And I've, I know, I know Angie and I know Flex and Mr. C and all these people. And whether they like me or whether or not we get along, I just know their resume. So it's, that's why it was so easy for me to pick up the phone and talk to Flex and be like, what the fuck are you talking about, you know? But like with you, I was just like, who are you? To me, you don't have enough of a resume to make those comments, but you know you did and it is what it is. Um, for whatever reason, our paths were meant to cross like that, so well, it's over. Well also, I will say this. You can catch the remainder of that base squad on Hot 97. Just type it in, Nick Minaj Hot 97. Um, child, at this point, it proves that the industry was jealous of Nicki. She was not only running hip-hop, female rap, she was running pop. She was keeping up with the Beyonce's, the Taylor Swift's, and the Lady Gaga. So no wonder they were trying to destroy her in hip-hop. But let's get into someone I love, Dej Loaf, equally. I think this Detroit native came into the industry and did something that just was like a breath of fresh air. She worked with the who's who's in the industry, some of the greats, some people who really hit the charts. She had bangers. I really felt like she was the princess of rap until Belkanana came on the scene because for some reason when... Belkanana showed up, it was like they had to shelve Dej Love and she was not having it. She was fighting against it, especially with the Jacquez collaboration, Matter in the Club. That still gets played, okay? It's on the playlist. So when I say the gatekeepers, the who's who's, these radio personalities that's never written a rap, never sung a rap, never did anything for the culture except for critique and destroy, but they want to cry about uh, they not wishing hip hop a happy 50th child, please. Hip hop has destroyed a lot more lives than it's rewarded them. There's people who literally pioneered hip hop 
that don't get no notoriety, no acclaim, no praise. And Dej Loaf is one of them. Like her sound is still heard on a lot of these newbies. The, the collaborations alone are still being remade with her ingenuity. So again, when people are sitting up here saying you need to praise hip hop, no, hip hop needs to praise those who came into this and poured into the culture. But those are just my thoughts, Bay Squad. Those are my opinions. Comment down below. I gotta go. Bye, hoes.